All in all, it was a never-to-be-forgotten summer, one of those summers which come seldom into any life but leave a rich heritage of beautiful memories in their going, one of those summers which, in a fortunate combination of delightful weather, delightful friends, and delightful doing, come as near to perfection as anything can come in this world. L. M. Montgomery Hello, and welcome to the Elegant Balance Podcast, where we explore how to create a well-balanced life full of simplicity, joy, and beauty. I'm your hostess, Dr. Kaylee Hackney, wife, working mom, and expert in the work-life interface. In this podcast, I'll be sharing the science behind work-life balance, practical tips, and plenty of love and encouragement along the way. My desire is to inspire women to pursue their elegant balance. I'm so excited that you're here. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to the Elegant Balance Podcast. I am so excited to be hanging out with you again today. It feels like it's been a little while because I've been on vacation. I've been traveling with my family and just disconnecting from from all the work and the social media and the emails and all the things. Um, which has been really good. It's been a really sweet time with the kids and with my husband. Uh, We did a road trip up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we stayed in a cabin, which was amazing. We were in the mountains and we went hiking and we went to a couple parks. We walked on this giant sky bridge. Um, We went to a park um, on the top of a mountain called Anakista, which required that we rode in a a sky lift to get up there, like kind of like a big ski lift which was probably the most terrifying part of the whole trip. (laughs) I am not someone who loves heights and you're in a ski lift, you know, there's no seat belts and my four-year-old is sitting next to me. It's like, if you barely slip, you could slip out. I don't know. It was terrifying, but we made it to the top (laughs) and had a really amazing time. Um, They had like treehouse bridges that we could walk from one tree to the other. And they had towers we could go up on and look at all of the mountains and, um, yeah, it was great. Honestly, one of my favorite days on our trip was a day that it just rained all day long. And I got to sit inside and sip on coffee. And I was reading Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And um, it was just cozy and quiet. And we finished the day off with some card games, you know, and eating dinner together. Um, So yeah, it was great to disconnect. But I'm also excited to be back here with you today. I hope that your summer is going well. I was trying to come up with some type of um, content for today's episode, like what what is our conversation going to be about today? And I wanted it to be inspiring and encouraging and fun um, because it's summer. It's it's a time for that. It's a time to celebrate, a time to have fun, a time to relax. And um, I know as a working mom, it maybe doesn't feel that way. Um, My kids are home with us 24-7 during the summer because my husband and I both work remotely and can both work from home. But what that means is that they're always there, right? They're always, you know, letting me know that they're bored, um, coming to see what I'm doing, which means sometimes I feel guilty that I'm not hanging out with them. Instead, I'm doing the work that I need to be doing. Um, Or maybe they're interrupting me because they need another snack, even though they've had several. And they also know where the snack drawer is. Um, So that makes it hard, right, when they're home. And I'm trying to work at home, too. Um, but maybe you're a, you work a nine to five and it's difficult because you feel guilty about sending them off to summer camp and you're a little overwhelmed with all of the coordinating that has to happen um, in order to get them to and from camp and who's going where and who's picking up and camp doesn't always go until five when you get off work. And so it can be it can be a season that doesn't feel fun, that doesn't feel like a time that you can actually relax and kick back, a season that's you know, has a lot of guilt um, kind of wrapped up in it because you want to be more present with your kids and yet you just don't feel like you're able to. Um, Thankfully, one thing that I do find comfort in as as a mom is that research consistently shows that it's not the amount of time that you spend with your kids that matters. Um, It's not how many hours in a day you are with your kids. In fact, if you're with your kids all the time, but you're also stressed and grumpy and snappy, Um, that can be detrimental. Um, Instead, it's actually the quality of time that you spend with your kids that actually matters. And so in today's episode, what I really want to focus in on 
are just some simple summer activities that you can do that will not only help you relax and enjoy your summer, but also activities that would create some really amazing memories with your kids and help you to be present with them. And um, I would consider these high quality, high quality activities, high quality time spent together. Um, Like I said, I know you're busy and I know this is a busy season with people running all over the place. That's why these activities are intentionally very simple. Um, But like I said, they have, I think, a high return for the investment. (laughs) Um, One concept that I thought about when I was coming up with some ideas for these activities was a trend that I keep seeing come up on my Instagram. Um, I'm not usually up to date. A lot of times trends start over on TikTok and I'm not on TikTok. I think I have an account, but I haven't been over there for ages. And, um, but there's a trend about like this whole soft girl summer. And basically what this trend is, is it's really pushing against the hustle, the hustle culture. Um, it's encouraging people to relax, rejuvenate, engage in self-care and manage stress and, um, challenges, right? Try to step away from the stress and everything. And on top of that, leading a more relaxed, you know, um, stress-free lifestyle if possible. But on top of that, it's also embracing being feminine and doing feminine fun activities like picnics that involve a picnic basket and a pretty picnic blanket or wearing a sundress, um, some things like that. So I also tried to incorporate some of this whole soft girl summer idea into this episode because like I said, I'm not usually up to date with trends. I'm not always a fan of different trends, but this one feels like it really just embodies what I like to talk about on our podcast anyway, Um, living intentionally and embracing the simple pleasures that we have available to us. Because if we are able to just embrace those simple things, the simple pleasures, simple joys, then we're going to end up with a life filled with many simple pleasures, joys, memories to look back on, um, which I think is really awesome. So without further ado, we're going to jump in to my list of 25 different simple summer activities or things you could do to elevate your summer. And I want to let you know that I did create a download, a PDF download that you can grab with these all listed out on a checklist. And the reason I created that is because I think it would be fun to see how many you can do. Again, it's not a to-do list. It's actually just a memory list, right? How many summer memories did we make this year? Um, So I made the PDF so you could print it off, check it off. If you want, add some extra things on there that you wanted to incorporate into your summer to try and help you live intentionally this summer. Um, But think of it as a challenge. Think of it as a way to start just intentionally creating memories for this summer, whether that's for yourself and um, engaging in some relaxation and some self-care and actually giving yourself a little bit of a summer break, or whether it's for your kids and your family and being more present and engaging with them. So without further ado, let's jump into the list. The first one I have, and I kind of already mentioned this, is um, to wear a sundress. I don't know about you, but I always feel so much more feminine and fun when I have a dress on. And I've decided this summer to try my best to wear more sundresses. And I'm about two weeks in, and I have to say, I've enjoyed it. Um, My four-year-old daughter refuses to wear anything but dresses. And I think she might be onto something, especially in the heat of the summer, because um, I don't know, with a sundress, you know, it doesn't have to hug you anywhere. It can just kind of drape over you and it's nice and cool. Um, So yeah, the first thing you could do is just put on a sundress. You will instantly feel more summery. (laughs) The second one is to have a picnic. So, and when I say have a picnic, I encourage you to just go all out. Go all out with this picnic. Pack a real picnic basket. Grab a blanket that is beautiful that you're excited to sit on. Um, Don't just take peanut butter sandwiches unless that's what you want to do or that's all you can do. Uh, But, you know, maybe grab some fun fruits and cheeses and crackers or a baguette and make this just a fun little um, fancy, fancy picnic, right? Out in the the backyard or in the garden. 
Um, I even like to have the kids help me plan what we're going to pack in the picnic basket. Um, you know, wear your sundress and it'll be extra, extra summery that way. <laughs> Number three is to read a classic novel. So I have been on a classics kick. I feel like I didn't read enough classics growing up. And now I'm rediscovering my love of classic literature. And I am by no means, you know, an expert in any of these. But I actually just finished reading Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And um, it was just so fun to really savor the words and the language. And um, it was just a charming book to read. And so I think it would be fun to read some more classics. And if you're really trying to embrace summer and you're somewhere that it's not too hot, in other words, you're not in Texas. Um, <laughs> it's hot other places. I'm just from Texas. Um, but go ahead and grab your book, take it outside, lay on a quilt or a blanket on the, on the ground or curl up in a hammock and read a classic book. Number four is to sip coffee on the back porch. I envision you doing this in the mornings, right? When you first wake up, you grab that cup of coffee before it gets too hot outside. Maybe the sun isn't even completely up yet. And you just sit on the, on the back porch um, or the front porch, wherever your porch is at, watching the sun come up and sipping on your coffee, listening to the birds sing, um, I think is another just beautiful way to, to celebrate the fact that it's summer. Number five is to play a board game or cards with your family. Like I said, I've been reading Jane Austen, and one thing that they do every time they have a dinner party afterwards, they play cards. Um, and we have been doing that as a family, not every night, but we've been playing more cards this year than usual, and it's been a lot of fun. We taught my son how to play Rummy. Um, we've played Monopoly Deal, which is kind of like Monopoly the board game, but in a 15-minute setting instead of, you know, a three-hour setting, which is great. Um, so yeah. Find some games that you can enjoy with your family and just make that a meaningful evening, right? Turn off the TV, turn off email, turn off the phones, and just engage with one another with some, with some fun games. Number six is to host a tea party. Now, my daughter would, lo would love if I would do this every day, um, but this is another way that you can embrace being feminine, that you can have some fun creating some memories. If you're working this summer and not able to do it in the afternoons, it could be a fun way to kind of, um, a fun activity on the weekends or even um, after dinner, having some tea with dessert would be fun too. Um, but my daughter and I like to get out her fancy tea set. Um, <laughs> it's tiny, so we take we drink several cups of tea because they only hold like a little splash of tea. Um, but yeah, wear a dress, you know, get out the tea set and just enjoy and enjoy engaging with one another, chatting um, and sipping on tea with some some fun little desserts. Number seven is to visit a museum. I haven't done this one yet, but I think it would be fun to go to a museum and just walk around. And even if you don't, it's something that you don't really normally do or something that you don't know anything about the art or the sculptures or history, wherever you're going, you'll probably learn something, which would be fun. And if you did it with your friends or your family or your kids, um, you would all learn something and have something to talk about on the ride home. Number eight is to go to the farmer's market. I feel like this is such a fun thing to do in the summer because there's so much um, just fresh produce that you can, you can get, you can smell, you know, the fresh fruit. Um, and later on, I, I'm going to talk about, you know, making a seasonal dessert. So you could pick up some fruit here at the farmer's market, um, or you could get some fresh flowers. If you don't grow them in your own garden, you could grab some flowers and create a beautiful flower arrangement for your home. Um, but yeah, just the experience in and of itself of a farmer's market is a fun summer activity. I know in Waco, the farmer's market is on Saturday mornings, but you know, look it up and see when yours is in your area and just make a point for you to go. It could be free entertainment, especially if you don't end up buying anything. You just go and look and um, talk about all the different things with your, with your friends. Number nine is to take a nap in a hammock. I think this sounds so relaxing. I do not have a hammock. I'm going to have to find someone who does because just sitting in the 
warm summer breeze. Like I said, maybe reading a book um, and drifting off and taking a nap just sounds beautiful and relaxing. And maybe that one's not something you can squeeze into your day, but you might be able to on the weekends, depending on um, the age of your kids. Or maybe they nap. Maybe they lay down to nap too, and you all get a nice little nap. Number, let's see, number 10 is to do a nature sketch or watercolor. I love the idea of sitting outside and drawing something that I see. I'm not an artist by any means, and definitely not a watercolor artist, but I was thinking about the fact that in my son's school, they encourage the kids, they have a sketchbook that they do their nature drawings in, and I just think that sounds like a beautiful way to slow down and appreciate the beauty of God's creation around us. And this is something that you could do by yourself, but it's also something that could be fun if everyone, you know, got out their notebooks and you all went outside and, um, and just sketched the world around you and talked about the different, you know, the different flowers you see or different leaves or different wildlife, whatever it is. Um, it could be a really sweet way to slow down and to have some fun conversations. If you're sensing a theme here, we're slowing down, we're having good conversations with each other <laughs> and just having some time um, to engage. Okay, let's see. Number 11 is to bake a seasonal dessert, which I alluded to earlier. I knew it was on this list somewhere, but think about, you know, what would be a seasonal dessert that you could try your hand at baking this summer? And it could be something you've never made before. That in and of itself is an adventure and something fun to create some fun memories around, um, you know, picking out the recipe and buying the ingredients and learning how to do it and then enjoying eating it. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoy eating it. <laughs> um, for me, it might, you know, might be something like a cherry pie or a peach cobbler. Um, but, you know, whatever is in season for where you're at, you know, whatever fruit you bought at the farmer's market, you could use that for your seasonal dessert. And this, again, is something that you could do on your own, learning a new skill or trying some new recipe out. But it also could be something fun to do with the kids, depending on how old they are. Mine are four and eight. My eight-year-old likes to, um, he's, he likes to help and he is actually helpful. My four-year-old likes to help, but is not, <laughs> it's not so helpful. Um, so yeah, it depends on, on their, their ages, but that could be something fun to do together. Number 12 is to fly a kite. Um, this might be more of a springtime thing, depending on where you're at, but I just feel like that's an, an activity that we don't do very often, but that is simple. It's easy. Kites aren't super expensive at Walmart, um, but it's, it's just a simple thing that's fun to do together. And maybe a lost, a lost pleasure that we haven't, that we don't do anymore. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, you'd have to find a big open area. Maybe that's part of it. <laughs> Number 13 is to play croquet. I, I feel like, you know, Flying a kite and playing croquet are both maybe some older pastimes that we don't do anymore. But it sounds like fun. I remember growing up, my grandma had a croquet set. And every once in a while, we would get it out and we would set it up in her backyard and, and play. Um, it's been years since I've played, but I think it would be a lot of fun to try to find a set this summer and play together. So if we do, I will let you know. <laughs> Number 14 is to make homemade ice cream. This is already on our list. We've got some planned to do, I think maybe next week with my mother-in-law because she makes really good homemade ice cream. But it's summer and it's hot and we want to cool down. And so homemade ice cream is a great way to do that. And, you know, maybe your kids don't even know that you can make ice cream and you could serve it with your seasonal dessert that you made with your, with your peach cobbler or your cherry pie. But just a fun activity that's relatively simple. It's something you can enjoy together and um, doesn't require a whole lot of time, right? It's pretty passive, I guess, And if you have an ice cream maker. Number 15 is to make fresh squeezed lemonade. This one's super easy. You just got to squeeze the lemons and add sugar and juice or sugar and water. And it's not just making the lemonade, but just... Imagine how nice it is when it's hot outside to go out and sit on the front porch with your with your friends or family 
and drink ice cold lemonade, right? This is something that you could do even if you are working full time until five o'clock, six o'clock at night and the kids are in summer camp. Everyone could come home and decompress by sitting on the front porch together, drinking some, some fresh lemonade and just talking about the day. What was great about the day? What was their favorite part about the day? What was maybe disappointing or difficult about the day? And just making space for connections around a a delicious pitcher of lemonade. Number 16 is to listen to a summer jazz playlist. I like to pull up Spotify and just search summer jazz. In fact, there's jazz, there's jazz playlists for every season. Um, But the sum there's summer jazz playlists that you could pull up and listen to. And it just helps set the ambiance, right? It gives you a little bit of a relaxing, fun atmosphere to, to just hang out in. And that's something you can listen to while you're doing dishes, while you're preparing dinner, um, or even while you guys are folding laundry or whatever you're doing. Um, but it just helps elevate it that much more. Number 17 is a little bit more involved, but it is to host a dinner party. I am a huge fan of dinner parties, and I feel like it's a lost art. It's something we don't do as often as maybe used to be done. Um, I feel like in my Jane Austen book, they're always going to dinner at their neighbor's house or they're having people over for dinner and playing games afterwards. And so I love to do this, and I encourage you to at least try it once, even if it's just you and your family, but make a big deal out of it. Get the fancy china out you know, get out the tablecloth, plan the menu. If you have kids, involve them in planning the menu. It can be super fun and just um, to, to, you know, kind of pair the food with the wine, to sit around the table and talk about who knows what. The conversation can ebb and flow and just kind of meander all over the place, if you will. Um, But yes, I encourage you. I know it's a little more involved, like I said, than some of these others, but Um, maybe just once this summer, you could host a dinner party. Number 18 is to enjoy a long nature walk. And depending on where you are at, maybe this means you just walk around your neighborhood and look at the different trees and flowers that are blooming. Maybe it's intentionally going to a national park or a state park or somewhere that um, has trails and you go on a hike. My husband took me on one during our vacation. I am not a hiker, I enjoy strolling through like beautiful gardens, but like to hike is, I'm not as great at that. Um, (laughs) Funny story, this as a side note, we we specifically chose the hike that was going to be shorter because we have a four-year-old. And when we got there, it was a popular trail to hike and there was no parking. We ended up having to park a mile away from the trailhead which meant that the hike ended up being just as long as the other ones that we turned down in favor of the easier one. Um, So yeah, we ended up hiking for five miles that day. And she did it. My daughter did it. It was quite the climb up because we were going up to a waterfall, but she ran ahead of us on the way back. So don't underestimate what your kids can do. They will surprise you when it comes to to walks, but it doesn't have to be a hike. You could just walk through your neighborhood or a park, but just do it with the mindset of intentionally looking around and noticing the vibrant greens and the bright colored flowers and the sounds of the birds or um, watching the squirrels chase each other around the trees, whatever it is. Um, but, but going on a walk, strolling through the park, um, intentionally looking at nature because this is a beautiful time to appreciate it. Number 19 is related, is to pick fresh flowers from the garden. And if you're like me, you do not have a garden. So this isn't as much of an option. I've been picking flowers from my mother-in-law's garden because she's amazing and has a wonderful green thumb. Um, But the only thing I seem to be able to grow are indoor plants that do not bloom. (laughs) So if you can't go pick flowers from the garden, you could at least maybe pick up some fresh flowers from the grocery store or the farmer's market and arrange a, a beautiful bouquet for your house. Number 20 is to go berry picking. I haven't done this for a long time, but I hope to take the kids sometime this summer. Um, But you could just find a farm where you can go and fill up the bucket with strawberries or blueberries or blackberries or whatever it is. Or maybe you have friends or neighbors or in your own backyard, there's berry bushes that you could go and pick berries. And what often happens, at least in our family, is that you end up eating more than you actually put in your bucket. But it's fun. 
They're so delicious. There's nothing more delicious than a strawberry on a hot day that you just picked from the from the vine. And so, yeah, go berry picking with the family. That might be a little bit more time consuming, but you could maybe fit it in on the weekend. Number 21 is to read a family favorite out loud. We love to read books out loud as a family. In fact, we don't actually have a TV set up in our house. Instead, the evening entertainment tends to be me reading a book that we're all, you know, we're all listening to. We just finished Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder, and it was great. I didn't know if the kids would like it or not, but they really liked it. In fact, my son is now reading or just finished reading Little House on the Prairie and is reading the next book in the series. Um, So yeah, find a family favorite, something you can read out loud and try that for a change, right? Turn off the TV, um, turn off the video games or whatever it is, and try just, you know, reading a story together. It's super fun. Um, Our next family read aloud is going to be The Hobbit. We started it on our, on our vacation and We're a few chapters in, but we'll probably finish it on our way home. Number 22 is to visit a local vineyard. This might be more like a date night. I have taken my kids to the vineyard and they just like to play and look at the vines and watch the grapes grow and stuff. Um, But it's also a really fun date night or date afternoon, if you will. Um, But it's fun. Yeah, find a local vineyard, go sit, sip on some wine. It's summer, so a nice, cool, crisp rosé is really nice. Um, And just enjoy. Enjoy the soft breeze. Enjoy looking at the vines that are bright green right now. And um, enjoy the wine. (laughs) Number 23 is to take your journal outside and write something. Write anything. It doesn't really matter. It's just the idea of being outside and being creative and writing about what you see, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, um, maybe writing a funny little short story, whatever it is. Um, I think it's something we don't do often enough, but it's be an easy activity that helps us to just slow down and think and get our minds off of work and the stress and stuff that might be going on, um, might be going on with regards to work. Number 24, we're almost there friends, is to just indulge in long conversations. And so these conversations could be with anyone, could be with your spouse, it could be with your kids where you just sit and chat. Um, maybe your kids aren't super chatty. Mine are. If I, if, if, if I catch them in the right moment, we could sit and just chat. Um, but really just taking the time to talk, to not be busy, not be trying to do anything else, not multitask, but just engaging in conversations and appreciating a conversation for what it is, giving someone your full attention and listening to their thoughts and ideas and frustrations. And so, yeah. And then number 25 is something I hope that you are all doing regardless of whether it's summer or not. And that is getting enough sleep. It can be hard to get enough sleep in the summer, especially, like I said, if you're running people back and forth all over the place, maybe you're doing travel baseball or softball or whatever it is you're doing. But, and and then the, the sun stays out forever. It feels like, but do your best to get enough rest, whether that is going to bed earlier than normal and maybe getting some blackout curtains for your room. So you can actually do that. Or maybe it is, um, catching up a little bit on rest during the weekends or making time for a short nap during your lunch break. Um, but make sure you're getting enough rest during this time. Um, like I said, it's summer break. The kids are on break. It doesn't always feel like us moms are on break, um, but we can get pretty intentional with it and make sure that we do give ourselves a break. So that's my list of 25 simple ways to just be intentional this summer, simple activities to do this summer. Like I said, I created a PDF with a checklist if you want them all in a nice, pretty checklist and um, can approach it kind of like a challenge, right? I challenge you to turn off the TV, turn off the phone, you know, set email aside when work is done, step away from work and just get intentional with appreciating the season for what it is appreciating the people in your life in the in the season that they are in, um, whether that's with little kids or teenagers or maybe you're an empty nester or single, whatever it is, just appreciating the season that you are in. 
um, and trying to just slow down a bit this summer because the world around us seems to want to move so quickly and wants us to be so busy and wants us to be doing so many things. Um, instead, I want you to just be able to step away and say, you know what? It doesn't have to be this way. I can slow down this summer. I can enjoy just some intentional, simple, pleasurable activities with my family and my friends or by myself. Um, so yeah, I am wishing you the best um, this summer and I hope you all have a joy-filled week. Hey, have you grabbed your copy of the Elegant Balance Workbook? If not, what are you waiting for? I've said it time and time again, but work-life balance does not happen by accident. It takes intentional action on your part. So let me help you. Go to kayleehackney.com forward slash workbook to grab your copy today.